This is Eugene Panrukovich. I'm the laptop screen doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have an Acer Aspire D255 netbook computer that we're going to show you how to replace a screen on. Now, I previously did a video for other Acer Aspire 1 laptops, but they had a different screen with sticker. So the screen that we're talking about, the mono laptops that we're talking about is the D255. That's the model number is usually on the bottom. You can get a zoom and close up. Let's see if we get a good focus. Can the camera cooperate with me? There we go. Acer Aspire 1 D255. Also, the D255E and the D260 use this same type of screen that I'll show you, and possibly some laptop models after the D260. So, before we do anything, we need to remove the battery on this laptop. So, we have to unlock it to make sure that there's a red part showing here on the silver. Right now it's locked, then unlock it. And this is, can be a little bit tricky sometimes. You have to slide this lever and pull out the battery like so. So this takes sometimes, for some reason, it's a little bit harder than it should be. So you have to slide this lever and pull out the battery. Okay, now that the battery is out, we can get to the screen. The, this laptop, as in most other laptops, has a screen bezel, the plastic frame around the screen, that we have to remove, and it's secured behind this. So it's a, secured by some screws, and these screws down here are hidden by some bezels, not some bezels, plastic covers. So before we go any further, let's take a look at the tools we're going to use. We have a X-Acto knife with a point and blade. I'll show you what that's for. An electronics screwdriver with a PH1 head. PH stands for Phillips, and one is the size. And a pair of sharp metal tweezers for removing screws that may be stuck. Okay, so first let's remove the screw covers, and that's what we use the X-Acto knife. We lift them up, they have adhesive, and what I like to do is just attach them to the side here so they don't get lost. So that's one, and that's two right here. Okay, once we remove the screw covers, we can remove these screws and one screw and two screws, almost there. I'm using my left hand to get a good camera angle. All right, for each set of screws, I like to keep them in a separate pile so you can keep track of them. All right, once we remove the screws, this is probably the trickiest part of the job, we remove the bezel. And what I like to do is use my fingernails or fingertips to lift up the bezel on the screen side and gently start lifting it up and you'll hear some snapping sounds and that means the bezel is snapping up from the screen assembly that's a good thing so just take your time go around if a part gets stuck try using going to a different part and almost there and the bezel is out now it's relatively simple all right so let's take a look at what we have here. We have this 10.1 inch screen, and this one's called a slim screen, and it's thinner than a standard laptop screen. And it's also, the screws is also held by tabs on the sides of the screen, which are screwed into the screen, screen assembly. The regular screens have screws on the sides, and so these two are not interchangeable. Here's what a regular netbook screen looks like. And there's some screw holes here, and there's some screw holes here, so it's held on to the sides and doesn't have the tabs as you see with this screen. So to remove this screen, 
we remove four screws from the tab. So it's one, two, three, four, right here. We remove these four screws using our screwdriver. Make sure the screen is tilted back a little bit so when all the screws are removed, it doesn't just fall forward on you. Okay. And once again, we keep this set of screws in a different pile from the previous set of screws. Almost there. Had some coffee this morning, so my fingers are a little bit shaky. They say it helps your memory. I'm not sure. Okay, so four screws removed, and now we gently start pulling the screen forward. And the first thing we notice is the the webcam cable has some tape on the back and some more tape on the back, you can see, so we need to remove this tape so we can lay this screen down. All right, there's a screen cable here, and there's an adhesive tab on the bottom that's attached to the screen, so we want to free this adhesive tab. This way we can get to the cable easily. And here is where the connector is. This video cable goes here, and it goes to the screen, and this is where the connector is. So let's get a bit close up right here. And it has some adhesive tape on top. We lift up this adhesive tape. And once we do that, while holding the adhesive tape up, we slide the connector out like so. Okay, and now the screen is free. So let's carefully examine the screen, make sure you have the right one. This right screen will have four mounting tabs, as you can see here, and the connector is going to be at the very bottom on the right. So let's compare this to a standard LED screen. The earlier Acer Aspire 1 netbooks and most other netbooks use the screen that you see on top. The difference is, is one is thicker than the other, the other one is thicker. This one does not have mounting tabs and the connector is in a different place. So these are not interchangeable. Make sure you're buying the right one. All right. So. Let's put this one to the side and let's look at the screen for, for this one. Let's look at the part number, see if we can get a good focus. Okay, it's B101AW06. So if you do a search for B101AW06, you should be able to find it. Uh, the other part, the other numbers are not as important. Okay, with, also with netbook screens, some have a glossy finish and some don't, so if you want a specific type of finish, either glossy or matte, make sure you know what you're getting when you're ordering it. All right, uh, screen surgeons, we also sell this screen, so what you do is you go to screensurgeons.com and click on buy a screen, and we have a separate listing for on our online catalog for this type of slim LCD panel and the regular LCD panel. We're going to break it down by part numbers. Also, if you're not sure which one, uh, send us email and uh, we'll walk you through which one you need. You might want to send us a photo of the screen assembly and then we'll help you out. Okay, when putting um, an LED screen back in, and this applies to just about any other type of LED screen, the biggest source of error that I see is that this connector is not engaged properly. So let's put the connector back in. So you will hear like almost uh, a clicking sound when it comes in. So not clicking, you feel it click. So let's take a look right now. Let's get the camera zoom in close. 
So right now is this is what happens many cases. This is not a good connection. You can see on the left it's not quite in. So we're gonna try again. Make sure I put my camera back on. Okay, take it out and this one's trickier than most because there's not much to work with to handle it. So insert it evenly, but not an angle. And now it's okay, so let's get a good close-up again what it looks like when it's inserted properly. So see let's get a good focus. Okay, here's a good focus. Okay, now pause your video right there and make sure the connection looks like this when you insert it. This will save you a lot of troubles. All right, and that's it. So the rest is fairly simple. Just reverse the procedure. Let's put the camera back on. Okay, carefully put the screen back in so everything's in. Make sure that the cables are routed properly. And just screw it back in to the right holes and put the bezel back in and you should be good to go. And once again, my name is Eugene Panrickwich. The name of the website is screensurgeons.com and we can either do the replacement for you or you can buy a screen from us and we'll give you free email tech support when you do the replacement. All right, thank you very much and have a good day.